You're listening to Sacks in the Basement, a production of the Broadcast Basement Limited, where every show is 30 minutes of good and comes from a basement bar on the south side of Chicago. Pull up a stool, pour a cold one, and join us right now for Sacks in the Basement. Heard everywhere podcasts can be found and always at SacksInTheBasement.com. Last night, my neighbor, like Hannah and I were woken up to the sound of somebody running a chainsaw at four in the morning in the middle of an ice storm. We had an ice storm in He's Chicago ice last night. Or yeah, it's the ice, or, yeah, the ice or isn't solid and it's, it's murder. Just, it's just it's probably murder. Murder or ice or ice storm. I mean, they are, they are they are they are hillbillies. <laughs> you know, like they hillbillies s- murder with chainsaws. They, well, yeah. <laughs> So today is uh, today's not out to a uh, a good start. So I, I have a new rule okay. until Manny Machado signs that I will not do more than five minutes on Manny Machado. I'm surprised we're even giving it five minutes. I, I won't do more than five minutes of it, and I'm not starting a show off with it. Okay. okay. Now there is stuff. To Fair ta- enough. There Fair is enough. stuff to talk about, but I'm not I'm not doing it to start the show. Okay. Um, I do want to start off with some observations that I had this week that aggravated me as a White Sox fan. I find myself getting really annoyed, and I don't know why I do this. I've always told myself I don't want to act like the inferior fan base, you know? I don't want to be angry because of how we're treated by outside people. Right. Like how, like, ESPN forgets us or how the local media covers us. But, I mean, I'm sitting in a doctor's office on Monday, and I don't read newspapers anymore. I don't think most people do. No, does anyone? You can get them online. Okay. Right, right, and right. one thing I don't read is I don't read the Tribune really because they got a paywall and after you get through a few articles, they want you to pay for it. And I don't know why I would do that with all the other ways that I can get White Sox news. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna talk about things that get written about on this podcast. So why would you pay for anything? Exactly. You know what I'm saying? I'm reading this the sports page and you know I used to write for newspapers when I was really young, like as a college kid. I wrote for like the college paper at the University of Illinois. And, and you know, I wrote for my high school paper. And I have a broadcast journalism degree because I knew I wanted to go into broadcast in some way. And journalism made perfect sense. So I've learned a lot of like journalistic things. Sure. Just being a part of it. The majority of that paper is Associated Press Stories. It's like a small town newspaper that doesn't have a staff. So there's a full page on Lindsey Vaughn. I, I don't know why. Yeah, I she got a full page. Okay, there's there's all these other Associated Press articles about things that are going on in the paper. Coverage for national teams, coverage for college basketball teams, and then there's there's nearly two full pages if you count up the little half pages and the one full page that's in there on the Chicago Cubs. Right, and it's covered by two of the three reporters that I see in Mondays that are actually reporter names, and it's not Associated Press story. The other one is Jimmy Greenfield covering the Blackhawks. But the other two guys, Paul Sullivan and Mark Gonzalez, both Cubs stories. Like, just nothing but Cubs. Interesting, because Gonzalez used to cover the White Sox. I saw him walking around the background at the winter meetings next to Kenny Williams. Okay. Okay, but that's the problem. You have a bunch of guys who want to cover the Cubs who are forced then to have to mention the White Sox. Right. But when it comes time for them, like, hey, we need you to write a thousand words on something. Okay, I'll do Cubs. And, and the only thing that had the White Sox mentioned in it was an Associated Press story on free agents that hadn't been signed. It had nothing to do with the Sox. It was a national Associated Press story right. well, that just uses the word White Sox in there once. And that's the entire Tribune sports section on a Monday. And I am starting to become seriously insulted by the fact that there's just no mention. I'm really annoyed by the lack of it. I'm really, and I'm really annoyed by people that don't cover the team 365 days a year, all of a sudden feeling as though they can come out with stuff and talk about it like as they're if, an expert. As if they're experts, And yeah. they're not an expert. No. They're not watching as many games as most fans are watching. They're not paying attention to what's going on with the players as much as the, play, as much as the fans are paying attention. You and I pay attention more than what these guys are paying attention. Correct. And to me, that that's insulting to me. It, that really bothers me, and yes. I, I, it really got me this week. Where I'm like, come on, I like like. There's too many talking heads that are going on local sports talk shows. I mean, first of all, if if the best thing that I could hear last week on the White Sox was that Dave Kaplan, ultra Cub fan, makes a comment about the Sox, 
Was it a super informed comment? Not really. It was like a, it was a comment of a guy who was just kind of watching it on the periphery. Right. But I mean, like it was one of the few comments I heard about the team all week long. There's got to be a point where you sit there as a Sox fan and go, this is ridiculous. And I I feel like Sox fans, especially when I look on like White Sox Twitter and stuff, are starting to, they, they've been doing it for a while, but I get it now. The absolute rejection of mainstream media when it comes to their team, because we're like the underground team. People always go like, why do you call it Sox in the basement? Well, I called it Sox in the basement originally because my original podcast was the broadcast basement. I, I We sit in my basement. It's it's at my nine foot homemade oak bar here on the south side of Chicago. The south side is literally the basement of Chicago, the way it gets treated right from everything from like it's it, restaurants. When there's a restaurant review, they, they'll put 20 Usually, restaurants in there and 19 of them are north side north restaurants. Side restaurants yeah. And there's one from the south side that isn't even a good restaurant. They just pick something out of a hat right. to represent it because nobody comes down here. You see what I'm saying? Yes. And, and, and the whole city treats us like that. So we're the basement. We're in the basement in the standings. We're the basement in the way that we're treated. And and I'm broadcasting from a basement. And and now I'm starting to feel like we're like the underground sports team. That's my feeling this the week. South I'm angry side, about it. And so, I don't I, I don't know why I'm so mad about it this week. But spring training is starting. And I've got to work really hard to find White Sox news. Right. Well, and yeah. I shouldn't have to work so freaking hard. You and, see what I'm saying? And, right. It had been... I can't remember who told me this, but it, it really puts things into perspective. The South side of Chicago is the biggest small town on the face of the earth. My wife's from Wheeling, West Virginia. She always says it's like living in a small town with ginormous skyscrapers on the horizon. Yes. Yeah. Because of that, what we, what you just talked about, that, that whole inferiority complex um, about not just about the White Sox in general, but about about the about the South side in general. Um, it's nothing new, you know, even during the world series year, I mean, we, uh, Oh, the second city, second team, the chip is returning because I see so much going on with this team. And I remember when the Cubs were at this point, they didn't stop talking about the no, damn they Cubs did at this not. point. They when the not. Cubs were bad and losing 100 games a year and rebuilding, there it was, was Cubs, 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 there Cubs, was, Cubs, 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 Cubs. There was an Anthony Rizzo right. slash Chris By- Bryant watch, like on a oh, daily basis. I knew basis. the names of all the Cubs prospects because I couldn't, I couldn't avoid. It was them. a daily basis. Like, is he going to get called right. up today? Is he going right. to get called up today? Then I see Scott Merkin's article that came out on the 11th. And Scott's probably a really nice guy. And Scott covers the team for he's MLB.com. Been cover- he's been covering the saying? team for a long so time. So I shouldn't be mad at Scott. No. And I don't think I would be mad at Scott. But the angst and the anger and the frustration of the lack of coverage and the cookie cutter articles and the bland like stuff that comes out about the team because nobody's really paying attention to them bleeds into my criticism of this article. All right. Because he puts out a thing that says this is what his projection is for the 25-man roster. Okay. And I thought this was lazy and, and, and maybe, maybe he knows far more than me, but if this is, if this is really it, if there's no surprise, if he sees no surprise coming as a person that covers the team, I, I just take a hammer and hit me with it right now. Okay. Okay. Because first of all, we talked about in the last show, the complete lack of Wellington Castillo in their promotional video. He's got him as the starter. Of course. With James McCann right behind him. He's got a Brayu and Alonzo, of course, Mancata. Uh, Sanchez over a third, Anderson at short, fine. Pelka, Adam Engel, John Jay in the outfield with Eloy eventually coming. His utility guys are Leary Garcia, Nicky Delmonico, Brandon Geyer, non-roster invitee is who he's thinking could probably end up in, on the team. And then his pitching rotation, Rodan, Lopez, Nova, Giolito, Manny Benuelos with Kobe going to the bullpen. We've we've all heard that. that yeah, that that's seems to be new. what the plan that's is. That's nothing new. Uh, your relief Colome, Herrera, Nate Jones, Jace Fry, Juan freaking Manaya, Caleb Frere, Dylan Covey, Ian Hamilton. That's what his projected 25-man roster is. And I sit there and I look at it and I so go, basically- I could have had my kid right. just write down who the White Sox players were in that. There's no risk taken in that article. So you basically just took your starting lineup from last year and just plopped in the new just additions. Plopped and in went, the new Here additions. You go. And and you just went ahead and posted the thing, you know. What and I'm then saying? you pulled a name out of a hat of a team that you, or of a guy you think might be a dark horse. And he's actually the most recent signing. Oh. he's a non-roster invitee. He was the most recent signing. Like so, he was like top of the mind. Like I said, maybe he knows more than what I do. But when I put it in the the overall feel of what things are like right now in the month of February as a White Sox fan, the the way that we're treated. 
when I read this article, it annoys me. It annoys me that we're not looking at any other possible player that could break through. We're not, we're not saying that there's anybody who, you know, especially the pitching staff, if you're still trying to convince me that Juan Manaya is one of the is is a good enough option he should be starting. A man who has averaged his entire career over multiple years putting one and a half base runners on per inning. Right. And that's yeah, when no, he comes I, in in relief and it's probably already inherited runners and he adds to it. And you're telling me that this is like we don't have anything else. Like you don't think any of these guys from AAA that have been invited to spring training. Any of these other guys on the 40 man roster Scott doesn't think they have any chance whatsoever. Like, like, none of these guys, none of these names that are on the 40-man roster that, that, are, that are going to come here, they have absolutely no chance. And we can talk to any other non-mainstream media guy, and they'll sit there and they'll start naming off guys. You know what I'm saying? Yes. We talked to Clinton Cole on the no, show a few weeks it. ago. He names off other names that, are, that, are, that, that, have a, that have a good chance of making the team. You see what I'm saying? Yes. We talked to James Fox. He names off other names that he thinks is possible of, of making the team. So to me, that's... I'm angry today, and I don't know. I, I, I'm sorry. I know I've wasted a lot of time yelling about this, but I mean, there's just a point where, as a Sox fan, you just want to like punch a wall. Hey, this is Acoustic Mike from Broadcast Basement, and you're listening to Socks in the Basement with Chris and his buddy Dave. I did the Broadcast Basement with Chris for 10 years, and nobody gave me a show. I'd leave if I had anything else to do with my life. Remember, the Broadcast Basement is available everywhere podcasts can be found and always at BroadcastBasement.com. All right, I got my stopwatch on my phone ready. All right. And tell, I, promise tell me, tell only you, I promise only do five minutes talking about Manny Machado. And the time and zero starts. Zero minutes on Bryce Harper because we're not getting him. Right now. Okay. So. And, the t- and the time starts now. Okay. So an article came out. So there's, there's been a nugget that I read this week. Turns out somebody, I don't know if you saw this, <laughs> unsubstantiated, of course, but somebody told somebody's cousin's nephew's brother's <laughs> drinking buddy uh, who has a, uh, you know, who has a platform to announce it on that the Yankees have actually, in fact, uh, offered Manny Machado a $220 million uh, seven to eight year deal. And there's back and forth reports on whether or not it's actually on paper or if they've just discussed it and not actually put it on paper. Or if it's true at right. all. Because and, that, and the moment the, that that happened, all of a sudden, that offer that we talked about two months ago, that everybody said, no, it's not true. Bruce Levine's like, ah, it's, it's only 70, 175 million. It's, ah. Now all of a sudden, it's like common knowledge. It's like the mainstream media finally accepted like, yeah, but that's not enough because everybody knows the White Sox offered $250 million over eight years. Remember, <laughs> right. re- remember when that was like to say that out loud, you were a fringe person for saying that out loud? Yep. Because because the so-called experts, they they were like, no, that's wrong. Oh, they were on Twitter dying right. on that hill. Yeah. Dying on that hill. Okay. And guess what? Now it's just normal, common knowledge. And where are they? They're nowhere to be seen. They've just they've just slunk back into the shadows to talk about the Cubs or whatever national it was story. It's really they talk interesting. About. They slunk they slunk yeah. back in because after it's clearly eight years after, of after Manny Machado's agent, um, right. you know uh, Dan uh, Lu- uh, Lozano. Lozano. Thank you. He came out and and this was when we were at uh, at the, at the brewery. He came out and just berated them. Right. And, and, and it, was like, it was why. like their Twitter account. Now you understand went, why. Their because Twitter. he knew the offer was much bigger and it was ruining his, his players' right, value. Right, right. Now we know why because now it's very clear. No, I knew why ru- from the beginning. Well, I know you, you know why. And, and saw, I, I felt that way too. But and, I, you saw those, and you saw those so-called experts basically. It was funny, dude. They, like their Twitter accounts were like that Homer Simpson meme where he like disappears into the bushes. Right. Like they just disappeared off Twitter for like. And Days. if they were on Twitter, they weren't talking anything based. Baseball. Right. They were they were avoiding any baseball talk whatsoever. Yes. And any questions posed directly to them. So to me now, I think it seems very obvious that the White Sox have the best offer on the table. And I believe my feeling, my gut feeling on this is that the Yankees fan base is very angry with the Yankees. If you if you pay attention to anything going on in New York, and I, I have talked to some people there, and I've read some stuff online from the New York papers, and I've looked at the New York Yankees blog. Well, and you got a buddy they, who lives right, out there. The, the Yankee fans are very angry that the Yankees are not in on these big free agents. They think that it's not enough, and they're not going to beat the Red Sox. And so the fan base is angry. And much like what we saw the Padres do a few weeks ago, and we talked about it, where the Padres are constantly a team that wants to be mentioned 
but never really offers enough money to win. Remember when they were they were they were Harper, they were JT the mis- Real Molto, and, and Manny Machado just two weeks ago, right? They now, were the they were the mis- they were the mystery right. team. Now they're ghosts. You want to know why? Because they were really never going to offer the amount of money that was going to pry that player over to their team. The Yankees are doing the same thing right now. They're aware of what the White Sox offer is and that it's more money, and they're saying, "Well, we'll offer two twenty, and he probably won't take that, but we can look like we are interested for our fan base." I don't think the Yankees are seriously trying to get Manny Machado. In fact, when you hear that it's possible, they haven't actually written it down and signed their side of the contract and handed it over in the hopes, like the White Sox have. The White Sox have a standing offer. Just take it. It's there. Okay, that's been widely reported. The the Yankees haven't done that. And it's probably because they want to be mentioned as they're in it, but they don't actually want to take it. If you do the math, they'd be so far over the luxury tax. They would have so many problems. Aaron Judge next year, it would be impossible to, re- to keep him. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Or the arbitration number would be insane. I, I, they, they, I saw a list of all the things, bad things that would happen to the Yankees if they signed Manny Machado to that kind of a contract. Okay? <laughs> it's just bad things happen to that organization going forward. So they want to look like they're in, but they want to be outbid. Manny Machado will play for the White Sox in 2019. I, I feel it in my bones. I find anybody that gives odds to the contrary that doesn't have them as the front runner right now is just not paying enough attention. I really still believe that this is going to happen. I am not worried. I have not seen one thing that has changed my opinion on this. Okay, no, or changed my belief on it. No, because in it's the all, past two months, it's all just it's all just thirty seconds, Dave. Thirty. No, because it's all just dudes that are throwing stuff out there and seeing what sticks. As I said before, this came from. You know, this came from a source, quote unquote, of somebody who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy who knew a guy. The guy who posted the article even said, take this with a grain of salt. This is unconfirmed. It's just it's just noise. Excellent. It's just noise. Excellent. You did a great job. Time. And we're done with Manny Machado. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Socks in the basement. Andy Castellanos is on the phone line with us right now. He has a band called the St. Rita Believe Band. If you were at SoxFest, they were in the vendors area. But the interesting thing is, if you go to www.baseballbelieve.com, where you can learn more about this band, the guy sitting right on the front page is the White Sox very own Yuan Mancada. And then when you click and see all the other people that are believing, like you go to their Instagram page, He's everywhere on the thing. Is he one of your biggest supporters, Andy? Uh, Yohan is, is, I think he is one of our biggest supporters. Avi, Avi Garcia was another uh, supporter of of the band. He's no longer with the Sox, but uh, there are many, uh, many other Sox are, 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 are followers, but I, I believe that Yohan is, is the biggest one. So tell me a little bit about the band. Uh, give me the kind of the cliff notes for the, anybody who's listening to the Sox in the basement this week on what the band is about, why the players are wearing the bands. Yeah, I mean, if if you're aware, San Rita has a lot of connection to the game of baseball. It goes back to the 1920s. Uh, fast forward to 2002 with the movie The Rookie, uh, and San Rita uh, has to do a lot with baseball. I created the band based on those historical facts, and and with something that happened to me personal with one of my uh, uh, with my one of my baseball bats that 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 I collect. Uh, which uh, which uh, brought me a lot of blessings from uh, from the bat and 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 with and and with that thing happened happening to me I, I created the band and and we launched our website a year and a half ago and it all started uh, with uh, one of the uh, batting practice uh, pitchers from the Sox his name is uh, uh, Cash uh, and uh, he uh, actually saw our advertising in a uh, in a magazine that I had on Baseball America and basically he just uh, Order some of the bands uh, from me, and then all of a sudden he invited me to go to, to Chicago in 2017, and that's where I met everybody. and And I talked to them a, a little bit about the band to the players, and and that's how it started. And now Saint Rita of Casha is, and I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna impress my mother, who has been making rosaries for the local church for the last 20 years, the patron saint of impossible causes. Are the players wearing them because they need a boost? Do they tell you why they wear them? Is this a uh, is this something where they're they're like you know what I'm having a rough time out there? I need to put my Saint Rita bracelet on. Well, I think it's I think the players wear it because of the historical connection that she has with the game of baseball. Not only with the rookie in 1951, there was a famous baseball game played in New York between the Brooklyn Dodgers and the 
and the New York Giants, and uh, that was the shot that was heard around the world, the Bobby Thompson uh, home run in the bottom of the ninth inning. Uh, uh, and that particular uh, game, uh, the baseball was never found in, in 1951. So they did a documentary called Miracle Ball, the shot that was heard around the world. Figure out what happened in, uh, in the doc, and you know, with the mystery behind the baseball, and and the mystery behind the baseball, uh, it's Saint Rita is behind the baseball of the Bobby Thompson home run ball. Uh, Andy Castellanos, he's got the official Saint Rita baseball believe band right now at www.baseballbelieve.com. You can get a couple different versions of it, and then the only one that's signed by a player, Yoan Mancatas. So clearly, I mean, like. This is his thing this year. I'm, I, I, I mean, and and I like it. If Saint Rita can help Yohan Mancata raise his batting average, I'm all for it. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if we can get the if we can get the batting average up, we can get a little bit more, uh, uh more more walks and less strikeouts. Uh, put two of them on his wrist, okay, Andy? Send him a couple extras. Send him, send him the hologram. Send him the red one. Send him the blue one. Send him the black one. Send him the one. With the, yeah, put five of them on his wrist. You got five different kinds here. I see on the website. Just line them up on his wrist. And that's all I want as a Sox fan. <laughs> that's that's what I'm doing right now. Believe me. I heard that a couple of the players are wearing the bands. Do you know anybody else in particular that you know is uh, going to have one this year or no? Uh, Louis Garcia wears it. Uh, Yomer Sanchez wears it. Uh, uh, Nicky Navarro wears it. The whole bunch of the pitching uh, staff, uh, the pitching coaches are wearing the band. Rick Renteria wears the band. Everybody that you've named is basically facing a big year for them this year. So, so, these, I'm glad that they're wearing the bands. They all need the help, so that's a good thing. Yes, and I think, and I think that you know, I think Chicago is in the right spot, and it's going to happen for them at the right moment. Uh, they got a good team, and 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 it's all and it's all about the momentum, and that they could compete with any baseball team out there. That's awesome, Andy. Thanks a lot for joining us tonight. You're welcome, Chris. Good night. Take care. Are you or someone you know looking to learn how to play a musical instrument this year? Then you should be checking out Westgate Music School, 6527 West 127th Street in Palos Heights. Private music lessons for all instruments, including guitar, piano, drums, voice, bass guitar, violin, banjo, ukulele, and more. Are you a vocalist? Are you ready to play a musical instrument and looking to join a group? Westgate Music School offers group classes for rock band, acapella vocal, and barbershop quartet. Students of all ages and ability levels will have the opportunity to perform three times a year in a student concert. Gift certificates for Westgate are also available. More information, call 708-586-7002 or go to westgatemusicschool.com. All right, so I got aggravated earlier mainly about the fact that the relief pitchers, like the list of the possible relief pitchers, like the expected ones that were going to make it into or onto the 25-man roster, according to this recent Scott Merkin article. Okay. I didn't like we're, the list. We're back to this and the now. first And the name that really bothers me is Juan Manaya. Yes. I have a healthy distaste for him being on my baseball team. I, I, I don't like it. I find it really hard to believe. I find it insulting. Well, that I, it's I, like I, a given that Juan Manaya is going to be on my team. I find it really hard to believe that you don't have somebody coming up the pike that is going to be that is it's going to contribute to this thing you don't a have a triple a pitcher that's that not one of your guys up. that you have earmarked to be one of your starting five because let's be honest as a team you see Rodon and Lopez and Kopech and Cease for sure as four of your starters you mean and in 2020 in or 2020 it, it, yeah. but I mean like I'm talking the going forward starters you see what I'm saying and then you have several other prospects that are going to be coming down the pike and you're hoping maybe Giolito can turn into at least a fifth starter and be serviceable for you for you know and and be something that and you don't know if that's going to happen but but that's what you're looking at yeah those are your hopes so the Jordan Stevens of the world and these other AAA pitchers that are down there they're most likely not going to be starters in the majors. So you're telling me that you don't feel like one of them could come up and put in a better inning than what Juan Manaya gives you. And I'm not saying Juan Manaya had one bad year. Juan Manaya's had one bad career. <laughs> okay. We're That's talking funny. four years here. I think of him going out there and putting on more than a base runner and a half for a relief pitcher. And, and it's, and now we have seen enough of him that there has to be a point as a team that you give somebody else a chance. What does he have naked pictures of Don Cooper covered in whipped cream? Oh my goodness. 
Um, I'm, I'm never going to get that image out of my head now. Oh, thanks, Chris. I'm actually looking What is wrong up, with me? I'm actually looking up Juan Mania. Even if it's 1.46 like his total whip was last year. It's unacceptable as a relief pitcher. No. You need to be you need to be under 1, 1.1. 1. 1. We've talked we've talked about that. Acceptable as a relief pitcher for you to be doing that. And on a consistent basis, you're putting on one and a half base runners plus whatever you inherit as a relief pitcher. I just don't see it's why like, they're holding on to him. It's like an insta run, an inning. I mean, pretty much, if you think about it. And yet, for some reason, like that, that's the belief. The belief is that he's going to be the guy that's going to come in there. I, here's what I, I mean. Is, it the, my is, is it the belief of the organization? Or is, like I said, is this just or like. Or is it lazy writing? Is it, or is it lazy writing? Yeah. Was it I, lazy I writing know. to just sit I, there and go? Was it lazy writing to bring up the stats of the guys from last year and go down the list? And if you were on the major league team, you're still on the major league team. If you were acquired by the team, you're going to make the team because that's why they acquired you. And then just list them in order of their stats and figure out who's going to make the team. Is that what he did? Because it looks like that's what he did. Pretty much. Okay. Pretty much. And, and, and to me, there's got to be somebody that's coming out of AAA that's going to take away Juan Mania's spot. It has to happen. Yeah. If you're Rick right? Hahn, if, you're, if you're Rick Hahn, you're, you're, you can't believe that. I mean, you can't believe that this guy is going to be a, a, a staple in your bullpen. I mean, does he? I mean, does he bring in cake every day for people? I mean, is, is, is he, know, is he on the party planning committee? I don't know. I think that's a Yomer's job, you isn't know, it? I is, mean, wouldn't that like, be a Yomer Sanchez is, who brings is, in cupcakes and booze like, and right? Is he the? Well, I'm just wondering. Is he the guy who remembers everybody's birthday? You know, I, I does dude. he have does he have hookups in towns where he can get the guys girls? Like, what what does he do? What is his special skill? There's got to be a special skill that he has that isn't pitching, which is why he's on the team. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, what? Is he really good at stories? Does he play the guitar on the back of the plane? You know, is he good at running poker games? Like, what does he do? Is he an emergency pilot in case the pilot has like a heart attack on road trips? Well, they could have used that back in 19. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, there's got to be something that he does. You know, does he have like a medical degree that I'm not aware of? And, you know, he could serve as the team's doctor. This is all I'm asking. I don't know, man. Is he good? Is he good at like you know? Maybe we should have got up and asked Yomer about that at that at that. Just ask Yomer like, what does Wamanaya do? Well, so how does yeah? <laughs> <laughs> that would have gone over real well. You dump Gatorade. <laughs> that would have gone over real well. You know, you <laughs> you dump Gatorade. <laughs> this guy next to you talks about hitting a lot of home runs, and he seems pretty cool. <laughs> You know Yonder Alonzo, I mean? that's what it was. Yonder Alonzo, yeah. yeah. And, uh, Jace, and Fry, Jace Fry is Jay, the good natured kid that gets Jace picked Fry's, on. He's totally Jace cool. Jace Fry is the good natured like, white like, kid. Yeah, they like yeah. to pick on him, and he, and, and, and he pretends that he can try, He tries to speak Spanish, so they like him. You know, that was, right. that was what we got from that. So, what, is, what, what does Juan Manaya do? What is Juan, I, I where's can't where, where's Juan Manaya's role? Is he playing good all food? All like, I mean, like, what, what does he do? I think it's party planning. I think that he's like one of those guys who remembers everybody's birthday. Like, you come in, and it's your birthday, and Juan's made you a sign. You know what I'm saying? Maybe he's the clubhouse DJ. Right. He's, I mean, is maybe that... that's what he does. Maybe he picks the music every day. I, I don't know. Gives great back rubs. These are the things I want to know. Why is Wamanai on the team? <laughs> See, this is uh, this is what you need to do as soon as we ever get some sort of media. I mean, on, as soon as we get point, some sort of media yeah. access, you need to just like be just like, so Juan Manaya, <laughs> like like dude this in the office. Won't get this. Is why I won't get media? Like access. dude in the because, office goes, because the mainstream media would never ask that question. So, They'd be afraid to ask that question because somebody would be mad at a brand's game. So it'd be like like I wouldn't ask that question. And, That'd be and, mean. I'm not a mean person. And, I wouldn't stand and be like Juan. Yeah, Chris, what do you want? Why are you on the team? Like that would be that would be a jerk move. It would be like it's office funny space. funny for me to say here. It would be, be like wrong. office space. What is it exactly that you'd say you do here? <laughs> yeah, if you could, you know, not give up <laughs> 1.5 base runners an inning. Yeah, that'd be great. Another show is wrapped up. Another show's in the books. Another show is wrapped up. And then by the looks, it's going to be a good one. And we'll see next week and the nude is basement and the nude is basement another show is wrapped up another show is wrapped up another show is wrapped up and it's in the books another show is wrapped up another show is wrapped up and by the looks it's gonna be a good one nude is basement Oh, broadcast basement, the notice basement, 
the broad basement. Slancha. That was like Dropkick Murphys or something, right? I felt like it. Socks in the Basement. <laughs> Heard everywhere a podcast can be found. And always on SocksInTheBasement.com.